You know, I've been thinking. Sometimes for more casual games, I really miss a dedicated gaming system. Something completely separated and that I can use on my TV, without the need to stream or run an ultra-long HDMI cable through my room. Something that I can easily control with a controller and is just truly meant to be gamed on. You know, something like the Steam Deck, just on desktop hardware. Oh, hold on, why not actually? Well, SteamOS 3 is open source nonetheless. But there is an issue. It's really narrowed down and optimized for the Steam Deck. But not to worry, the Linux community got you and already developed an identical copy of it, which can basically run on the same hardware than any other Linux distribution. Meet SteamOS Hollow. But hold on there for a second. Before we get into it, let me quickly remind you to give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Alright, that's enough breaks for now, so let's just jump in. So why do I want to specifically use SteamOS on a console-like system? After all, Steam's big picture mode is nowadays basically the same thing. One might say that I do this because of optimizations and whatnot, but the truth is actually way more simple. I choose to. The beauty about open source Linux operating systems is that you have choice. And given that SteamOS is an operating system built for a console like System, I choose to use it. No other reason is really needed. It has Steam's new console interface, which is now also available in big picture mode, and if I really needed a desktop, then I can simply switch to Plasma, a desktop environment from KDE. That's some pretty cool stuff. But before we get into how SteamOS works, we first need to install it. SteamOS Hollow is currently distributed through a GitHub page, where you can download the ISO. If you are new to GitHub, then all you really need to know is that if you want to download the latest official version of it, you can find it in the releases on the right. From here, you can just download it. The upper link didn't work for me for some reason, but the Google Drive was working just fine. After that, you can flash the ISO onto a USB stick with Belina Etcher, Rufus or the Fedora Media Writer and plug it into your new machine. What you want to do next is to head into the UEFI and make sure that it is actually running in UEFI mode and not in some legacy BIOS backwards compatibility mode. Another thing that you need to deactivate is Secure Boot. You can usually find it in the advanced settings. Now I'm not a huge fan of this personally since only booting signed packages can help against more primitive malware. But since this will only be a gaming system, which shouldn't really download anything from third party websites, we should be fine. Now we want to finish the UEFI setup by of course changing the boot order to our USB stick and hit save changes. Once we booted the SteamOS Hollow ISO, we are already greeted with a KDE Plasma desktop, whereas we can test our media to find out if there were any errors during flashing or we can go ahead and install it to our main drive. We first want to select Install Hollow ISO and hit OK. Now I'm demonstrating this installation in a virtual machine, which means that I might get a couple more options than you. But what you want to look out for is that you select the disk, which shows the capacity of your install drive. In my case, I use an SSD with 100 GB, so I'll choose VDA. Since I only want SteamOS on my machine and don't have any additional operating systems, I'll choose Erase Entire Drive and click OK. The root user password is essentially the password for your administrator account. Now root is a lot more powerful than your typical Windows administrator, but also way more dangerous because of that. So don't wildly execute everything with it, if you were to use the desktop mode. But that's just as a side note. Now we can choose our username, whereas I'll just pick Enro, I'll give him a password and let's begin with the installation. Once finished, we can now reboot our system and head straight into SteamOS. Be aware that on some machines you might need to change the boot order back to your main drive again. By the way, if you're setting this up in a virtual machine, then make sure you have a GPU that you can pass through or otherwise SteamOS won't boot. Ok, so now we can just log in into Steam, download some Linux native or Windows games which are being made compatible through Wells Proton layer. 
Before we do this though, I think now is a better time than ever to connect the controller so that we don't have to keep using a mouse and keyboard. You can do it with a cable, a dongle or by just using Bluetooth. From a usability perspective, SteamOS is solid, to say the least. Installing games is easy, but honestly, the first thing that already bugs me is, why is your game library already hidden away? Like what? Okay, besides that, it's actually really easy to use. With the Steam or Menu key, whatever works for your controller, you can navigate between the most important things, like the store, access your friends list, screenshots, as well as downloads and the settings of course. If you want or maybe even need the desktop experience for let's say watching some videos for example, then you can do so by going to the Steam menu, go to power and select change to desktop. And there, a fully fledged Linux distribution right on your, well, console. But maybe you're asking yourself the question, why use a PC as a console? Well, maybe you're someone who prefers mobile devices and likes working on a laptop. Maybe you want an affordable, powerful and from the general usability perspective easy system while also keeping the freedom to have a fully fledged desktop. If you already have a desktop system like me, then maybe you want a dedicated gaming station which isn't affected by your hobby that includes messing around with operating systems. And with the PS5 and Xbox Series X being out for quite a while now, the price to performance ratio on hardware is getting to the point whereas you can again get a cheaper but more powerful PC for the buck. This just isn't possible at the launch of new consoles, because they of course make sure that their ratio just cannot be matched. So yeah, that's kind of the thing that I want to do next. I don't want to spoil the fun, but when we get to the actual hardware that I want to use, then boy, you don't want to miss it. So definitely make sure to like the video if you like this short introduction to SteamOS Hollow. And definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. Well, I got a bit more planning to do for a very big project, in the meantime you can watch another video instead. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.